Hi, this is Maggie. In this video, we're going to look at unit testing in which a class definition is the unit being tested. Objects are interesting to test because objects have state, in other words, values of private fields that are only visible through the object's behavior. Messages sent to objects can transform that state in ways that aren't immediately measurable from outside the object's methods. For our example, we're going to unit test this trivia question class. What I have here is a UML state diagram of an object of the class. This shows the different states an object of the trivia question class can be in, represented by the rounded rectangles, and the transitions between those states, represented by arrows. I couldn't find an arrow for a transition that keeps the object in the same state, so unfortunately I drew those arrows by hand. The start state is this filled circle on the left, and the final state is the filled circle within a circle at the bottom. A trivia question object represents a trivia question, such as you might ask in a trivia game. It has a question, some answers, a point value, a score, and the correct answer. So for example, a trivia question object might represent this question worth 10 points. Who was Alan Turing? One, first team midfielder for Manchester United. 2. The father of theoretical computer science. 3. The true name of the Red Baron. 4. 19th century Scottish playwright. In the state transition diagram, we can see the object begins at this filled circle, and the constructor, trivia question, is what puts it into its initial state, unposed. Unposed. In other words, nobody has been asked the question yet. It's just been created. In this state, the question can be mutated or changed. Once the object receives the pose question message, it is put into the posed state. From this state, we can send the answer question message, which transitions the object to the scored state. In the scored state, the object can respond to the get score message. In each of these states, there are messages that don't make sense for the object to respond to. We can't get a score or answer a question that hasn't been posed. We can't mutate the question once it's been posed. We can't pose it again and we can't get a score because it hasn't been answered. Once answered, we can't mutate it or answer it again. All attempts to send messages to the object that don't make sense for the state it's in send us to the final state. In the code, Posed and scored are Boolean fields that are initially false. The posed field is set to true in response to the pose question message, and scored is set to true in response to the answer question message. To handle messages that are sent when the object is in an inappropriate state, the methods throw the runtime exception, illegal state exception. Let's look at one example. Here is the mutator for the question field on lines 83 through 86. Set question. It checks the posed field if this.posed and throws the illegal state exception if it's true. This will end execution of the method. If the field is false, indicating the trivia question object is still in the unposed state, execution will continue by changing the value of the field. Now let's design test cases for this class. If you haven't used JUnit before, I recommend you watch one of my other videos on adding JUnit testing to your project in Eclipse or writing your own JUnit tests for methods. I'm going to gloss over those basics here and just create a new JUnit test case in this project. The project has already had JUnit 5 added to the build path. When I create this test class, I will have a before each method, so I'll check that checkbox when I create the class. I'm going to have a class level variable, which is a trivia question object. I'll call it question. And in the method setup, which has the at before each tag before the header, I'll create the question with the Alan Turing question. To make it easier to create our tests, I'm going to add some constants to the top of the class for the question and the error messages we expect to get.
Okay, so I have the question, answers, correct answer, and points fields, as well as the string for the post question as constants. And I also have four error strings as constants for unposed, unscored, already posed, and can't mutate situations. In setup, I've created a trivia question object called question with the constant values. The setup method will execute before each test, meaning my object will be in the unposed state before each test. Now let's write some tests. Let's start with the unposed state. If we attempt to get score or answer question, we should get an exception. However, we should be able to mutate all fields successfully. Let's write three tests, one for each exception and one that will mutate all fields possible then pose the question and then score the question with the correct answer to ensure that the question text changed, the correct answer changed, and the score changed. We'll have to write some constants for that new question, so I'll just do that first. Okay. I'll write the two exception checking tests first. I've used the at display name tag before each and given each a description that clearly states what's being tested. And then I've also given each method a name that reflects what's being tested. And in each method, I assert throws for the illegal state exception, and I check that the message is the appropriate message. Let's run that. And our class is throwing exceptions correctly in the unposed state. Now let's write a method that will send mutators for all of the fields, then pose the question and confirm that the question text is correct, then answer the question with the correct answer and confirm the score is correct. Okay, so again, I've got a display name and method name that reflect the test. And in the method, I've broken it into three sections. In the first, I send all of the mutator messages. In the second, I pose the question and confirm that the question has been mutated by checking the question text. And in the third section, I answer the question with the correct answer and confirm that the points received are the new points set. This also confirms that the object transforms from the unposed state to the posed state, although we'll test that when we test the posed state as well. We want to test not just the states, but also the transitions. Let's run this. And again, our class does appear to be working correctly in the unposed state. That is a test of the trivia question in the unposed state. Now I'll discuss how I'd test it for the posed state, and you can practice by writing those tests and then deciding how to test it in the scored state and writing those tests. In the posed state, there's only one message that can be sent, the answer question message. This transforms the object to the scored state. In each of my unit tests for the posed state, I'll have to first transform the question object to the posed state. So we'll first send the pose question message in each test method, and we can confirm the text that we get as the question text. We can then write methods for testing that all mutators, get score, and pose question throw an illegal state exception. Finally, we'll write a method to test that posed does not throw an exception in response to the answer question message. Here, it will have only changed its internal state if it's working correctly. We get nothing back from that message that tells us if anything has changed or not. 
but we can test that transformation in our methods that will test the scored state because we'll have to pose the question and then answer the question to get to the scored state. Here's a hint for you too. In the scored state, you should test that it works correctly for both correct and incorrect answers. I hope that this video has helped you think about how objects can behave differently in different states, how they transform between states, how to visualize that with a state transition diagram, and how to test for that with unit tests that treat the class as a unit. You can practice this by rewriting these tests, and then by writing the test I described for the posed state, and then figuring out and writing the tests for the scored state. The code that I wrote here is available in my GitHub repository linked in the description. Have fun with it.